Hey everybody, welcome back into Bayou Time. Harry McCullough here. We're talking uh, the Bayou Community Foundation. It's actually been 10 years this foundation is underway. They're celebrating a decade of work and some good work it is. They've getting, given away over $8 million in grants uh, to the area. And uh, here to talk about is Jennifer Alman, who is the Executive Director of Bayou Community uh, Foundation. Amanda Odin is the Executive Director of Lifted by Love, who is a, a pro nonprofit organization had actually received some grants. So we want to talk a little bit about, well, it's been 10 years. I, I you probably can't, God, that went fast, right? I know it <laughs> did. It did, Harry. Um, uh, as we talked about earlier, Bayou Community Foundation was formed um, back in 2012 when um, after hurricanes, uh, Katrina, Rita, Gustav, Ike, and then the 2010 Gulf oil spill, um, local residents here decided that it was time for our region, Lafouche, Terrebonne, and Grand Isle to have a community foundation of our own, to be here to help build our nonprofit capacity during good times, and then of course, support our community um, after disasters. And we have surely seen that with right. Hurricane Ida. Right. Um, so for the past 10 years, we have awarded over 1.97 million dollars in annual grants to nonprofits for regular operating programs, um, human services, education, workforce development, coastal issues. And then since Hurricane Ida, we've been able to um, grant out over $5 million for very critical relief and recovery services in yeah. our area. Yeah, it's so, so important uh, to, to have a vehicle to, to there's grants available, right? That I guess from the feds or from yeah. different people that just want to help. Right, private foundations, to, corporations, right. yes. So how, how does that work that, that that you guys can go out and find all these, or do they find you? <laughs> well, we do uh, work a lot with uh, local uh, family foundations, uh, individual donors, um, private corporations. And then after Hurricane Ida, of course, um, just the outpouring of support yeah, and right. compassion and generosity from people all over the country who realized that while the networks were showing New Orleans, it was really our coastal communities right. that had gotten impacted the most. And we were the ones who were being overlooked and needed help. So we were able to reach out to companies all across the country, uh, private foundations and individuals. I mean, the, the donations through our website were tremendous. Right. People who really cared about our residents and our communities and wanted to help. Yeah, no, look, I had a lot of people, I, I work for another company that, that's worldwide and they were like, how can we help? You know, we want to come down. I was like, whoa, don't come down. Right, no place to right. stay. Uh, you could bring some gas and drop it off and go back, you know, at that time. But, but yeah, the outpouring of those kind of things is great to see. And mm -hmm. you guys have done a great job kind of organizing all that. Uh, one of the people that just received the grant is, right. you know, it's Amanda right. in, in your foundation. So tell me a little bit about uh, what your foundation, Lifted by Love, does. So Lifted by Love is a nonprofit geared towards um, helping teen mothers who are in foster care or considered at-risk youth or are homeless. Um, our main goal is to help them become self-sufficient and to prevent um, reoccurring cycles of neglect and abuse to their babies. So with that, we do transitional housing and we provide um, tangible items, diapers, wipes, formula, um, things like that to the community. Um, since COVID hit, we kind of scaled our services to just moms in general because there was a need all over the board, not just for our teen mothers. Um, and so since COVID, we've been doing our tangible item um, giveaways, which are the diapers, wipes, formula, um, just to moms in general in our community. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, my ears perk up when you say formula, right? Uh, <laughs> right. We've had a worldwide issue. You know, obviously we had a uh, plant that, that closed down and that's right. Most of the baby formula came out of that camp. Absolutely. What's that been like trying to find formula for, for um, mamas so and their babies? It was, a, it was really scarce at one point where we couldn't find any formula. Um, luckily from our prior giveaways, we would overbuy. And so because we overbuy, we had a lot of st um, formula stored um, at our facility. And so uh, with the formula shortage, it kind of came in hand because a lot of moms, their babies were either changing formulas or the formula they needed just wasn't available. And so a lot of our um, generic brand formulas that we had, they actually came in handy for some of our moms. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And you were able to exchange it and that, that's great. So um, when, when you get back to the Bio Community Foundation, how is important is to find somebody like Amanda and, and work together and, and those things work together? Yeah, oh, it's tremendously important. Um, 
one of the greatest joys of, of my job working with Bayou Community Foundation is learning about and um, working with organizations like Amanda's, like Lifted by Love, and nonprofits throughout our area. We have hundreds of nonprofits who um, have paid staff members or are totally volunteer organizations right, who right. are doing tremendous work to address some of the most critical needs. Um, and we are lucky enough through the donations to Bayou Community Foundation to be able to award grants to those nonprofits, such as the 32 grants we awarded last week right. um, for the local nonprofits. Yeah, so we're taking a look at, at you were down the bayou uh, in La Rose. Yes, that, yes. That, that you were able to, there's a $327,100 were grants that were given to 32 nonprofit uh groups right and then uh, you had a, a nice picture of all the folks that that are benefited yeah and, and as i take a look at, at your list i mean look these are some of the big services that our community depends on right yeah exactly and exactly uh, one of our donors a few years ago um said something that has stuck with me he said nonprofits do the important work that private industry and government just cannot do right and i think we have seen that um during regular times, but most importantly, through the pandemic and through Hurricane Ida, we have seen the heavy load that our nonprofits right. carry for this community oh, and sure. the, the extreme, extremely important services they provide to our residents, particularly those who are the most vulnerable. Right. And like I say, and then all it takes is a storm, right? You don't always see, you know, <laughs> lifted by love. But when you see a storm and you see all that come together, you go, man, that's a lot of great organization. We were talking a little bit about uh, lifted by love and, and one of the things you do and one of the upcoming things you can do is a diaper bank. That's great. And and tell me a little bit about that. And, and so you have a warehouse that you're, you're, you're you, you keep a lot of these supplies. So that's correct. Um, initially, when we got started, we would lug home the extra overflow of diapers formula to the facility um, where we kept them like in a closet on the shelves. And um, one day I just said, well, maybe I'll just buy a shed to put in the yard and put everything in there. And I'm like, well, no, that's not big enough. And so I went and picked up some donations from a another organization they kind of had like a a room but it was kind of almost like a warehouse and it was like filled with diapers wipes formula and i'm like i want this for our community because we need it and i have so much stuff i need to store and so i literally one day just googled like warehouses and um i found a warehouse <laughs> and so i said well i want to start a diaper bank at least so that um we can store our things and then it can be on a larger scale for our community um and moms are able to come out on a more frequent basis to get what they need um for their children and so with the shortage of formula and you know the pandemic oh, 30 yeah. i think they said 36 percent of families that had small children they went without the needs of uh diapers and formula right. during the pandemic and so just seeing it's small but it's big because those small things contribute to other things the children sure. can become sick or exposed to different things and so i said well i want to you know expand and give something bigger on a bigger level more frequent and so that's how we came up with the diaper bank and so these funds that we received from the bayou community foundation will be geared towards running that diaper bank yeah and so it's at uh, 253 capital that's correct and it's all the way at the back of capital so that's it's correct. almost by bow high and capital that, that is time. correct so that's great. Uh, it's great that you can do that and, and a big need for our community. Most definitely. Now, Jennifer, we were talking a big need for the Grand Isle community mm -hmm. is housing right now. So you guys are uh, working on some houses for new for, for folks down there? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, we were so grateful this spring. We had a tremendous effort with Mennonite Disaster Service. Um, we had 400 volunteers over a period of January through the beginning of June from Pennsylvania and other parts of the country um, who came in to volunteer with, with Mennonite Disaster Service to build homes, 10 new homes, and repair over 40 new homes in the Dulac community. Um, and the Mennonites are returning in the fall to build more homes and repair more homes in Southern Terrebonne. Uh, but our focus right now, as Dulac has been so successful, we want to bring that success to Grand Isle. We know that the need there for home repairs and new homes for people who lost everything is tremendous. And um, if we thought Lafouche and Terrebonne have been overlooked, Grand Isle oh, has been yeah. overlooked even more. And it's the residents there that, that we are so concerned about right. and want to help. Because without the residents there, you don't have the people to work in in restaurants That's and and other facilities um and to 
maintain the tourism and the economy of that island. So um, we have launched a program called Rebuild Grand Isle, rebuildgrandisle.com, working with Our Lady of the Isle Catholic Church there and the town of Grand Isle and um, the um, United Methodist Church volunteers will be coming this fall to help with repairs there and funds that Bayou Community Foundation raises will be used to pay for all the building supplies so that volunteer labor can then make repairs and build new homes for people on the island. Yeah, that's one of the things that, you know, after the pandemic and then you hit by hurricane, supplies are short, right? You can't mm -hmm. find supplies anywhere and then to find labor to actually work on it's right. been real difficult. So right. I imagine that's all part of it. Now you said the Mennonites and that, that piqued my interest, Pennsylvania, Amish, the mm -hmm. Amish. Right, right. So, do they drive down? They're yeah, not taking a buggy, yeah. Right? So, um, <laughs> no, the buggies do not come down the Dulac. <laughs> um, but I'm sure the Dulac people would love to see right, it if, if they right. did. But um, no, the uh, they Mennonite, make great furniture. You yeah, know? they do. Look, their craftsmanship is unparalleled. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen the, ha the homes that they built are built uh, storm resistant. They're resistant up to 160 mile per hour, per hour winds. Um, built far above the floodplain elevation. Um, it, the houses are, are just wonderful. Um, but they they come down, it's a very organized operation. Mm -hmm. Mennonite Disaster Service comes down with a bus and then they have volunteers who come about every two weeks, 30 volunteers at a time. And then they have project managers that'll stay four to six weeks or longer wow. um, managing it. All volunteer labor, all expert craftsmen, um, we are just so blessed yeah. to have yeah, been so selected to by out. them yeah, it, to come here and build new homes for us. It does your heart warm when you see that. You see kids on their spring break instead of drinking in Panama City. They're down here helping yeah. people out. It, it's always yeah. awesome. Yeah. Hey, we've got about a minute left. Uh, how do people help out with Bayou Community Foundation and Lifted by Love? How can people, if they want to help out, go directly? To sure, guys? sure. Um, by visiting our website at bayoucf.org, bayoucf.org. Org. You can learn more about Bayou Community Foundation. Um, you can make a donation to our um, Bayou Recovery Fund for Hurricane Ida Relief. And all the money that you donate to Bayou Community Foundation stays right here and goes directly to grants to provide relief and recovery services to Lafouche, Terrebonne, and Grand Isle. If you have a heart for Grand Isle, rebuildgrandisle.com. That's awesome. And what about Lifted by Love? The same, liftedbylove.org. Um, you can donate on there. You can read more about our efforts. And um, the link to our PayPal is on there as well. Yeah, no, that's great. And look, we appreciate it, you guys, you know, because like I said, we all want to help, but we don't always know how. But to have you guys kind of organizing, you know, and we appreciate it. You're big assets to our community, so we appreciate thank it. You. Thank all you. All right. Well, Jennifer and uh, Amanda, thank you guys so much thank for you. joining us. We'll be right back for more Bite Time right after this.